All right, we're set to get ready for our second game here on the schedule. Day number one, weekend number two of the 2018 Volleyball Nova Scotia Provincial Championships on Volleyball Nova Scotia website. Hi, everybody, Dan Hansen. This is the Capers. They're in the orange and white. They have won the coin toss. And is Blois back to serve? Along with McDonald, Duffney, Pike, Blois, and McManus and Beaton, your starters there for the Capers. The Lakes there in the blue. They're going to be having Cote, Ludington, Frazier, Abby Desat, Earl, and Matlock to start digs off. Lakes had an easy win earlier. It wasn't really expected to be like that. It was going to be a tough one for them. But they had two easy wins in their previous contest. Just wrapped up minutes ago. A 25-13 and a 25-12 win. And just like that, they're getting scoring going here as the match is now tied at one apiece and here early stage of this first set it is under 13 action and a chance here for the capers to take the lead here they'll get it over the block Frazier right there but pass a little bit too far out of the reach of Claire Matlock and unable to get something going in transition so the capers have their first lead here early this afternoon but they have a chance here, the Lakes do, to tie things up here from the service line in the hands of Claire Matlock. There's the first touch. And the second one there by McManus. And a big shot there as Duffney gets all of that. Big swing, big results there for the Capers on a 3-1 lead. And now they have a chance to make it a 4-1 lead here. There's the set. And tried to go for the attack there was Pike. And then at the last second, she decided just to hit it over and went wide. So it makes it 3-2. And now the Lakes have a chance to tie this up. The head lead seconds ago, but that went by the wayside. Mike might be able to find a hole, but a nice dig there by Blois to keep it alive for, for the Capers. And the Lakes thought they might have found something. And of course, as a result of that big dig by Blois, moments later, scoring the point to make it 4-2. Nice work. Especially there by Blois, Blois, pardon me. Blois, my apologies there for that. Went to the floor, hoping for good results, and got it. McManus serving. First touch there by Ludington. Not the greatest of passes, but sent over there by Earl. Here's a free ball here for the Capers. Very strong program out of the Cape Breton Regional Municipality. And their third hit is well short. And it makes it a 4-3 game. And once again, Lynx have a good chance to tie things up. Frazier had a pretty good game earlier against the Crossfires. A couple of kills and some big points. There's a big attack there and whoa, big swing. And Pike got all of that. Cote wears it right in the midsection. Makes it 5-3. But you could just hear no mercy being applied there to the ball there by Pike. A big shot by her. Looks like they're trying to set her up again. This time it will be beaten with the south paw on the left hand. You see the legs were look like they were going to try to zero in more on Pike, but just too many weapons here right now. Pike and McManus. Big swing out of them, 6-3. First touch there by McDonald. There's the set. More big swing on his way there by Pike. Denied there by the Lakes. They'll just send it over. Here's a battle along the net. And pushed over there by Beaton. And once again, a big dig there by Bloy. She's got a couple already. And this thing has just got underway. There's a big shot at Dick's tape. But Pike scores. And makes it 6-4. That's gonna be an interesting matchup and something that I think that Lynx may want to adjust to get Frazier there. More big swing off the deflection and out towards the back. And 7-4 the score. Renee and Jill Doucette, the coaching staff here. This is Renee out here throwing this ball up. Lynx need to put out a fire here. Big swing over the wall there by Earl. 
And a nice play there by Dufty, trying to catch some napping. And they left a big lollipop there, and the finish there by Pike. An over hit, and Pike makes the pay the price. 8-4. As traditional, I'm not sure if you were with us last weekend here for some of the volleyball coverage, but you will hear the capers and that was a little bit of a questionable one. We'll see if the Licks pay for it. It might have gone out of bounds, but Cote played, played it anyway, and they will get hurt and feel the sting of that, beaten with the left hand down the middle of the court. 9-4. Links get it up over the wall. In transition, here are the capers. And it's just hit over there by McDonald. Lakes now. Boy, there was some miscommunication there. They had a good high set, a good chance there to get an attack going. And everybody just seemed to look right now as the score is 10 4. Capers hoping to make that lead longer. And unfortunately, they send it long. And according to the referee, but uh, Chandra Shaker, there was no touch. So 10 5, we'll have a tie boat here in the early stages here of this first set, but you got to be really impressed there by Pike with a couple of kills already. And, you know, you know when you think of uh, volleyball, like especially well, I'm talking about the college level, and I don't want any of the Cape Breton fans, of course, to get upset. I know they're watching back home there on the Big Island. We say hello to them. But that is a really strong program that they have. You don't really think of it in terms of the university level. Of course, they Cape Breton University Capers had a volleyball program, but they have some strong players that have came out of that area. And one that comes to mind actually played for the Capers before they ended up losing their volleyball program. And that is Deirdre Jones, who just finished off a fantastic uh, three seasons there, two or three seasons there for the St. Thomas Tommies in the ACAA. She came from that neck of the woods, solid volleyball pro player was captain and pretty well a catalyst and a really solid player. Successful finish there for her. Unable to win a championship because that is a very strong MSVU Mystic team, but not really much of a surprise to see that it's 10-5 here as these Capers strong program with some strong volleyball players. It's just a shame that they don't really have a volleyball program at Cape Breton University anymore in women's play. Maybe hopefully they get some Throw there, that's grass root. Service air is touching the line there was Abby Doucette. And that costs them 11-5. But it'd be nice for them to have a program back up there once again. Some really strong players in that area. And we're seeing it again. Oh, look at that. Big Donald finding the hole. Rather than try to go for the big attack, just dunk it then, find some floor here to score. 12-5. Frazier, that's well over. Coming back for the set there was Pike. That's hit over. Lake's just happy to get it over. Another free ball here for the Capers. Keep away from the free balls the Lakes have got to, and they get a piece of it, but it goes to the back, and it makes it 13-5. And this is the thing also, too, is that uh, That looking at this, this is the uh, Capers' first game of the day, the late second, so handcuffed. But it goes long, and Ludington now basically doing a little prayer there. Going to make the play and missed it, but it went out of bounds. There's Ludington with the first touch. Not the great pass. Cote, flat foot up and got it over. Second pass there for the Capers, goes towards the back. Here's a free ball now here for the Lakes. And it looks like there's a hitting error on its way there by Doucette as it goes off the side of the gymnasium here, court three. There's a set on its way. Oh, a big shot there. McDonald wanting to get in on the party there with uh, Pike and Beaton there as she comes up with a kill there. Makes it 16 to five. Capers have come to play. The Lynx, I know they're going to be in for a tough game. This looks pretty good. Frazier gets it over the wall. Second set. There. Nice, beautifully done. 
Bloiser had a couple of big digs. Now she wants to take off. Does, scores, back line. Boy, she could do it all, digs, and you knew she took off. One, two, three, it was done like dinner. Sixteen to six. Earl hoping for some magic here. First touch, Dufty. Donald and towards the back. Two person game. Back following was Earl. And pretty well once she was back flaring, the ball got there quicker than she anticipated. And no time to react. 17 to six. Chance. Make it a lead of a dozen. Nice set here by Beaton. Take it off again. Oh, it's a big dig momentarily there for set, but it goes sailing towards the stands and Ludington unable to get a second pass going. Boy, Bloise, she's got some. She dug a couple of big shots here for the her. And that's too far there for a third pass. They'll try to get it over there for Matlock, Claire Matlock. And it's 19 to six. Links who played pretty good in the last one. There's a silk paw beaten. There's Grayson just happy to hit it over towards the back. Duffy. And get the pass there with McManus. And a miss hit there by Shyla Earl. And they score it. Now it makes it 20 to six. Need to really put out this fire. Frazier decides to put it towards the back. Another free ball on its way. Take it off. Was Bloise again. She didn't get her usual one, two, three steps to take off. Was actually backpedaling, but got it off. Gets the score, 21 to six. So far, they have no answer for Bloise. She takes off again. And rather go for the block of Frazier, she goes to the side of Frazier and gets it 22 to Six. Boys bringing the heat early in the game. That was Pike, but oh, <laughs> Earl feels that one. Got her in the back and head area. Sometimes you see players put their hands towards the back on things like that. So it's 23 to six here, and a chance here for the Capers to take the first set. They could have set it on its way. It was tight towards the net. And a net violation called against McManus. As I said, tight towards the net. And not really a great second pass. It's 23-7. Frazier with the set. Chance here and a missed time there by Matlock. It was not a bad set there by Frazier. Just Matlock just didn't want to take off. And a little bit of hesitation, so here it is, set point here for the Capers. 24 to seven. A chance to wrap it up. Put it in the hands of McDonald here to finish it out. Overhand serve is up. Oh, and Fraser trying to go for the other one, knowing that the first pass is not great for Cote. 25 to seven, the Capers take this first set. And all credit to them, and the Lakes just had too much of a hard time. Earlier going, it was Pike beaten with the left hand, and Boyce with a couple of nice digs too. So, I mean, it's just like a fantastic first set for her. So, I mean, the coaching staff here of Denise Chason, as well as Jacqueline Kennedy, must be pretty happy there with the first set. Uh, Renee and Jill Doucette will try to get everybody together, try to get them to flush that first set of the way and come after here in the second set. Capers, well, they want to prevent a third set from happening. Of course, the third set is 15 to 15, so. And they have a game coming up against Crossfire Orange, who the Lakes defeated earlier, so they want to keep everybody well rested there. Is, these provincials, they are pretty well a marathon. They have one game, and sometimes you have back-to-back -back games that 
sometimes you have another court that you got to go to and you pretty well go round and round sort of like a like a racetrack going from court to court so you want to keep everybody as fresh as possible and prevent those three sets because sometimes you get to that third set it's just exhausting there for the team that's the underdog I guess you could say in certain terms a team that really wasn't expected to get it to go to a third set but did it just seems like the stronger teams this is based on last weekend of course the first weekend with the under 14s and stuff so again to that third set the stronger team just finds a way to get themselves over the finish line and that's what I think that the uh, capers here are trying to win is get it to that third set anything can happen in those third sets but a strong first set and by them Frazier was a little bit quiet there for the Lakes. We had a chance to do her game earlier and the folks in Truro back home watching on that one there. She had a pretty good one, but a little bit quiet in this one. So maybe they're hoping for a little bit of a stronger effort here, but that's some size and some really good players there on the other side, like Boyce and Pike were pretty good and had a fantastic first set for them. So that would be an interesting matchup there. We'll see if uh, Boyce comes out here for the second set versus Frazier, that would be something because Frazier, of course, the tallest. I need to start getting some blocks here because you can see that she has got some big swing and she was able to score a few points there in that first set. Can Frazier really shut the door? We'll have to wait and see. Capers are ready to go. Renee and Jill giving some last second instructions. Renee at the scoring table, getting a lineup card to the scoring staff. Jill with some final words of encouragement. They'll make a couple of changes here. Isabel Garrett, who we did not see in that uh, first set coming into the game. Uh, Earl will stick around. Ludington will stay. Frazier staying, and Emily Doucette getting some action here. Never stop coaching is Jill Doucette as she talks to her troops just before they uh, wanted to come back onto the court. And Brooklyn Collins, the final one, starter there for the Lakes. McLeod, who we did not see, but who is a very impressive player, as well as Bumber Kett and McKinnon out there. Uh, McDonald, Florence, and Knowles, the starters here for the Capers. Second set to get underway here at the Canada Game Center here in Halifax. My name is Dan Offset. Delighted to have you here for the Volleyball Provincial Championships on Volleyball Nova Scotia website. Presented with the services of Bell 5 TV1. Delighted to be here. Emily Doucette will serve here for the Lakes. Trailing one set to none. Hoping for a definitely a better set out of them. Florence tips it over the wall. Are they going to get it there? Yes, they tuck it in. Sometimes you've got to be good to be lucky. Lucky to be good. Just a quick reaction, but... The good three passes there by the Capers. And it makes it one nothing for the Lynx. Really important here to try to get up to a good run here. Capers trying to block that out. Florence over the wall and unable to block it. Ludington, big swing from Florence and she goes down the middle, scores it. Makes it 1-1. Boy, these Capers, boy, they just got big swing on them, don't they? And Ludington this time says, I'm not going to try to go through the block. I'm going to go beside the block. Finds the hole to score 2-1. Likes over the capers. Here's McDonald back to serve, trying to tie this one up. And does as that is a howitzer coming the way of Isabel Garrett. And the service ace dance on its way there by the capers. You might have seen it. Momentarily makes it 2-2. Thanks really don't want to get behind the A-ball. 
Nice decision there by Ludington. Battle along the net. And a uh, height advantage, Knowles defeats Ludington, scores the point. And this is what I say, the Lakes have got to come up with some blocks here. Big swing on this team there. Oh, good quick reaction there by the Lakes. Ludington trying to catch the napping, that's unsuccessful here. Once again, big swing, and towards the back. Knowles once again scoring back-to-back -back points. So many weapons here. I mean, we talked about Boyce, Pike, Forts, Beaton, and you can add Knowles to that as well. Fouls up on its way. Florence set this time. Knowles, can she get another point? Yes, she can. She is hot. Cooking with gas, 5-2. And we're going to have an official timeout as the scorekeepers are wanting uh, Vinaj Chadra Shaker to head over to the scoring bench area. And in the meantime, the Lakes will huddle up as well as the Capers. And the Capers fans there in the orange, you may be able to see it there in the left of your screen the black and the orange there making some noise there get behind their team and boy they had a pretty good first set i would say they're continuing that hot play and i'm telling you one thing if you're the under 13s here and you're watching this game and you're seeing the capers boy this team they've got weapons and it's going to be taking them maybe the rest of here these under 13 tier ones you know to say, hey, we're one of the faves. Keep an eye on us or don't forget about us. Well coached there by Denise Shaysaud as well as Jacqueline Kennedy. So the issue has been rectified here and the Lynx will get the ball. It's Isabel Garrett back to serve. The team trail it and it's 4-2. Uh, made an adjustment in the score. 4 2. And punch towards the back. I'm not sure if that would have got out, but Frazier played it nonetheless. And we'll leave that question for hanging there for the meantime. And it's 5 2. Lots of hand Knowles and finds the hole again. No answer for Knowles, the likes right now, 6-2. Lynx will punch it over towards the back. Here's a free ball now, Forge with the set. Guess who again? Knowles, a chance. Denied there by the Lakes. Smallest player of the court, Collins will head it over. Here's a free ball now, set again by Forge. McKinnon towards the back. Frazier, gonna be kept alive. No, as Collins couldn't get there, she Hit the dirt, but not in time, and it's 7-2. Ball is up, ticks the tape. Service ace for Florts. Uh, there's really nothing you can do about that. If it says it ticks the tape and it goes over, there is Basically quick reactions and not enough time to do it. The second pass there, not a great one there. And that set Ludington scramble off the hands of Earl. And it's 9-2. Knowles, this is actually good news. He doesn't have to go for the big shot there. It's punched over. There by McKinnon, here's another free ball. Knowles with the set again. And she got all of it, had some nice hops there with McDonald, but right into the net. And it likes climbing back, make it 9-3. They still got a lot of work to do. Maya Ludington. Serve will be on its way. There it is. Trying to go to the middle. Rolls with the set. McKinnon. Well high and well over. 
And Elizabeth Garrett just not able to get a good first pass going, and it's 10 3. So the Capers lead by a touchdown now. Tight towards the net, sit over with Knowles on the net. Yes, she was. It looked like it. She looked up and questioned the call there by Chandra Shaker, but to no avail, it's 10 4. Good first pass, a good second one. Frazier! Al Florence with the arm. Can the paper save it? Yes, they can. Gonna be a free ball, they'll send towards the back. Exchange and freeze here at the Canada Game Center. McLeod scores. 11-4. Ball I'm trying to go back over, actually hit Earl. She's having a tough afternoon. She got a ball on a serve in the back and got that one almost too. Did get that one, pardon me. Well, she showed that she's got the heat as that was a bullet there by Knowles. A few kills here in this one, but she's serving and punches it towards the net, makes it 11-5. Garrett. Frazier, boy, she finally get going. You could hear that one as she got all of it there on that nice little pass, and she had a chance to score and does. 11-6. They need blocks, but there's so many weapons. Oh, and they were together there once again. Mumber Kett and McLeod this time. Both in the neighborhood, and Mumber Kett didn't have really much room to take off as she put that ball in the net so the Lynx would get the ball, and they're climbing back. It's 11 7 and making 11 8 as Florence and Knowles couldn't get on the same. Page on that one. It's a three point game, 11 8. Link's fighting here. It was a six point deficit at one time. It's actually seven, to be honest. And Bumper Kett puts the end here to the Lakes roll and gets a big point, makes it 12 8. Collins with some help there as Earl gets it over the rest of the way. McKinnon, big hit by McLeod. But that goes wide, and it's 12-9. They are fighting here in this one here, the Lynx. Down as much as seven, and now they're within striking distance to try to make this a set. They've already lost the first one, 25 to seven. McKinnon serving here. Overhead serve. Collins, nice one, but it's going back the other way with it. Oh, and showing some size there. Just punch it over with the block. Nice play by McLeod. Now she'll set things up. Take it off through the block. And net violation. And that's unfortunate. It was more along the hit. But the thing is that you can't touch the net. The net hit Frazier. She's going to be called for the net violation 13 to 9. Ludington. College. Frazier. Try to go for the corner. And Florence keeps it alive. Here's a free ball. And it was an over hit, but the Capers were right there. They were gonna put it right back down where it came from on the over hit. Five point game once again, 14 to nine. And that's through the block, through the hands. Bumper Kitt scoring the point, 15 to nine. Brooklyn Collins here. Got within three, but not any closer. And now she's hoping here she can get it done, but oh, just too much height there. McLeod, the overhead and the finish, 16-9. It's hit over. Looked like they tried to find the spot, and they might have as Collins couldn't get a second pass generated, and it's 17-9. Got within three, now it's eight point game again. Garrett with a big swing, dog out there by Florence. That's hit over. McDonald had her back towards the net when she hit it over, but it went well wide. 17-10 is the Lakes score. 
McLeod, who's had a pretty good second set here. First serve, it's on its way. A little indecision there by Gareth. Right close to the line. Thought, hmm, this may go out of bounds. And then it looked at it. Uh, no, didn't. Have to make a play, but not enough time to react to hit. And uh, Capers score again. Major with the set. Garrett, big swing. Just outside the line, 19 to 10. Their ball out its way here. Chance to put the Lakes into the red zone. There's a big swing. Call it's Frazier. Sends it over. There's a free ball here for the Capers. Florence there. Through the block of Frazier and down. They were anticipating a big attack, but it was just hit over by Florence. She gets the point and it's 2010. Frazier hoping for some magic here from the service line here for the Lynx. Down by 10. Florence, no wall set up there by the Lynx. And the Lynx on a heading error is Emily Doucette difficulty. 21-10. Capers look like they'll be okay. They'll play the crossfires. They had a one game rest. It'll be our next game. Punch towards the back and Frazier on the miss hit. Three away from victory, 22-10. Really important possession here for the Lakes. They got to really score a point here in this one. And they won't as that will be driven into that there by Garrett, 23-10. And the coaches, Renee and Jill Doucette, just letting this play out. Umber Cat, big jump serve. Over Collins and lands inside the line. So here it is, set match point. Humber Cat a chance to put a nail into the coffin here for the Lakes. Collins. Ludington. And Knowles hits it over. Now it's just returned. Here's a free ball now. There's the set for it. It's a chance to finish. Punches it over and scores. And that will wrap it up. 25-10. The Capers just too much here for the Lakes. Lakes had a little bit more fight. But for a whole lot of sec here, maybe the adjustment here scored 24 11, pardon me. So uh, 24 11 as they have changed the score here at the scorer's pitch area. And that will do it now. So it'll be 25-11. It will go down in the books of service error to end this one here. Too much for the Capers there. 25-7 in the first set, 25-11 in the second set. The Lakes, after having a very good first game, this one they just ran into a team that's pretty well cooking with gas and they've got a lot of weapons and they've got a lot of good hitters and some good strikers. And they came to the dance here today. And they're probably leaving the dance and going to have a little bit of a party momentarily are the Capers, but they have to get ready for the crossfire. And that will be our game coming up next here. The game is scheduled to start at three o'clock, but we remind everybody that uh, sometimes they may start a little bit sooner than that. So we remind everybody to stick around on the screen and keep up to date. So we've got the crossfire and the Capers coming up next here. So for Drew Demokas, our producer, camera operator, everybody is Dan Also, Thank you for tuning in. So long for now from the Canada Game Center in Halifax. You've been watching the 2018 Volleyball Nova Scotia Provincial Championships here on the Volleyball Nova Scotia website presented by Bell 5 TV1. So long for now.